So I've been using the Slinko Whiteout 18x20 for 100 days now. I've tried over 10 different string setups, at least 20 different weight configurations. Put it on my head. And I've done all this testing in some combination of training sessions, league matches, or tournament play. So today I'm gonna share everything that I've learned during this time about my game, my fitness, and my skills as a customizer. Grinding through racket customization in the height of tournament season has got to be one of the most demoralizing experience a tennis player can subject themselves to. I can totally see why Shackle struggled so much after he tried to switch to the ESO 98 last season. Every shot you miss gets overanalyzed, overcomplicated, and too heavily scrutinized. It's not that you're blaming your racket on every shot, it's more that you're questioning whether or not you've made the right decisions with your customizations. In my head it's just like, if I added more tail weight, would that return have gone over? Would it have felt more solid? If I added less tip weight, could I have flicked that passing shot over? The thing is, at some point you just have to stop. You have to commit to a setup. But at what point is the right point? With my wideouts, I struggled to know. I tried swing weights as low as 326 and as high as 345. I tried static weights as low as 323 and as high as 351. I tried balance points between 31.7 centimeters and 33.3 centimeters. And this level of variation meant my recoil weights varied from 153 all the way up to 175. So here's what I learned about my spec preferences. I kind of struggle with balance points above 32 centimeters. I learned that I really love swing weights around 340 until I have to play that second set, then I'm just done. I learned that recoil weights above 170 for me make that racket swing super fast, like it comes through surprisingly quick, and even when they have big swing weights, but just because it swings fast doesn't mean that I can swing it fast that whole time, especially if it's a tough battle in 30 degree weather. And most importantly, I learned what shot is most heavily impacted by these changes. I can hit my backhand with pretty much any racket. I can return efficiently with almost anything above 330 grams, and I can rally from the baseline with basically whatever. But the one shot that I need, the shot that I can only hit with a certain spec, is the forehand down the line, especially on approaches. The closer I can get my MGRI between 20.8 and 21, the more accurate and accurately powerful I can be with my forehand. It really helps me contact that ball out front, take it early, and stay on top of the ball. With anything lower, it just feels like my forehand sprays wide, sailing like well clear of even the doubles alley. I feel like I just have to be way too careful to keep the ball in, and I just start babying my forehand in a way that's completely counterproductive. Could this be because I suck? 100% it's just because I suck. But ultimately, tennis is a game. You play to win, so why not take any advantage I can get from my racket? So here are my strong specs, which are final-ish, I guess. Final for now. 345 grams strung, 31.9 centimeter balance point, a swing weight of 326, which means you got a recoil weight of about 160, but my MGRI is pretty high at 21.09. At most, this is just a mild deviation from my extreme tour. It's a few grams lighter, it's a little bit more head heavy, with a slightly lower swing weight to compensate for the higher twist weight we have on my whiteouts. I can get away with a slightly more feeble spec because the base spec of the whiteout is so much more powerful, it's more stable and more solid feeling than my 360 plus extreme tour. I picked those things up lately and in contrast they feel absolutely anemic. So what about strings? So I've tried like 10 different string setups at tensions ranging from 45 to 52 and here's what I've learned. The whiteouts are not exactly comfortable. Torn a Silver 7 Tour at 52 pounds stresses my wrist. Slinko Barb Wire might be one of the worst strings I've tried recently and Tour by Diamond Rough has awoken my curiosity in rough strings. 
A full bed of restring zero turns the whiteout into an absolute rocket launcher, even at a slightly higher tension for what I'm working with at 52 pounds. It, it's like the bablat of strings. There's so much power and so much spin, but so little connection to the ball that it kind of feels like you're spraying and praying. Headhawk power was really surprising. It was honestly one of the most fun play tests I've had since Grapple Snake Tour M8. It feels like Polytour Pro and ALU Power had a baby. Crisp, yet so plush. It's too bad the durability really sucks and the string only plays well fresh. But here are my top three setups so far. Number three is Turna Silver 7 Tour at 48 pounds. The slightly lower tension is still very comfortable for me and it alleviates that wrist pain just enough. Spin, durability, control, and everything else are pretty much just where I want them. Number two was Torline Wasabi at 45 pounds. Fresh, this plays amazing. The low tension unlocks a lot of creativity with my forehand, my backhand. I feel like that extra ball pocketing and dwell time gives me this ability to create a better dip on the ball for nasty angles. And I even hit some like banana passing shots in doubles, which was pretty fun. But number one so far has been Tourna Silver 7 Tour mains and Restring Zero crosses at 52 pounds. The Silver 7 Tour gives me the feedback in the string bed that I need to stay in control and zero really increases spin. It's crazy. You get so much snapback even when the strings are old and notched. It's shocking. The ball just seems to dip at the very last second and I love how I just don't have to string this setup. I can kind of just leave it in my racket until it breaks, which I love. So if you want to try any of the Toro line strings, which I, I have to say, I, so far I've liked Wasabi better than Caviar, but either of those, you can get 20% off using a link below. And if you want to try Restring Zero, then I've got 10% off for that one. While I'm pretty happy with my whiteout specs as they are, I just don't think that I've really fully settled on strings. I want something that's a little more connected and predictable than what I'm getting with my Zero Hybrid, and I still haven't tried a lot of my favorite strings from Grapple Snake, mainly Tour Sniper and Tour M8. Not to mention there's a brand new string on the horizon called Paradox Pro from Grapple Snake. My Grapple Snake rep and I have almost identical tastes in a lot of stuff. It's weird from tennis strings to BMWs and colors. And this string I know is designed around a lot of those preferences. So it's a very cool darker green color and predictability, consistency, playability, duration were really prioritized along controllable spin and connected ball pocketing. He says that there's just nothing else like it on the market due to the introduction of a new metal into the composition, which we're gonna see in much higher percentages than we've ever seen before. My sets are on their way right now, and whatever I have in my rackets will be cut out as soon as they arrive. I'm pretty excited. I've, I've known about the stringy development for like over a year and he's made me wait so long to try it. Anyway, so let me know what specs you're enjoying with your racket setup. Have you settled on a final spec for tournament play? What string are you using for matches? Let me know. See you next time.